Evolva for the PC. When a giant parasite hurls through space, it lands on a planet and it starts feeding off the indigenous population. This is picked up by a I don't know, probe, beacon, something, and the, you know, this is investigated then by, we're never really entirely sure who, because we don't find out anything about them other than that they can provide you, the player, with control over four Geno Hunters. And Geno Hunters are humanoid beings. They're basically human in the overall shape. You know, they don't have extra arms or extra eyes or anything like that. They have a, a color to them. Basically, it's one color that covers their entire body. This might change, but I'll get back to that. And a bit of a shiny surface. And basically, Geno Hunters can absorb the genetic material of anything they've killed and mutate on the spot, in the field. So these four are sent out to attack the parasitic creatures that come from this large parasitic host organism and absorb their genes and mutate in order to be able to handle the larger and tougher of the parasitic creatures. You're doing this in order to save the indigenous population, which is a little strange because you actually do decimate the this self-same indigenous population in order to acquire their abilities through their genes, but maybe they didn't really think this through on the drawing board. As you progress, you will get... There, there are ten abilities that you can get. Now, you can either choose to specialize certain of the Geno Hunters, or you can choose to go for giving them all all of the different abilities. When you mutate, it might take some genetic material from one ability, and there are levels to them. You can think of it as the role-playing game aspect of, you know, leveling up. Once you've collected enough of a certain, you know, type of gen DNA, you can upgrade that ability. But it might also require a little bit of just I guess it's junk DNA or something, and that might take away from one of the other abilities. So, you know, let's say you have running in level 3, but then you upgrade fire breathing, yes, to level 2, and that might bring your running down to a level 2 also. You start out literally with no weapons. Your fists are all you can use to fight with. Then you get claws on those fists once you've destroyed the first several, and you get, you know, more and more advanced abilities. One bone to pick I have with this game is that ten abilities. They have ten different things they can give you, and several of them suck. There's really no two ways about it. They just suck. One of them is like a shield that really doesn't work for very long. One of them is invisibility. And you, again, it really isn't that big. There's no stealth in this game. There's no stealth. All the AI is they'll run straight at you. There's a little strategy involved, but there's no stealth. There's no sneaking. There's no... You know, you can stage the first attack if they haven't noticed you yet, or if they haven't gotten to you by the time you 
you know, engage that attack. But other than that, it's just, you know, action, yeah, action gaming. You're basically just either slashing or shooting something at your opponent. You know, so you have shield, invisibility, there's one that just confuses the enemy, and this is sort of, it's actually much more effective when they use it against you. Anything you can do, they can do better. No, they can already do, you know, if you're fighting that enemy. To get, you know, fire breathing, you actually have to kill beings that breathe fire on you. And to get the claws on your arms, you have to defeat these giant spiders, I guess, more or less. The creature design is not half bad. And I will say some of these abilities, they really did good on. I hate to use the word puke, but that's pretty much what one of them is. Now that in itself is just disgusting, but it slows down enemies, and you can draw a line of puke, and then if you light that on fire, the entire thing will start to burn, and if an enemy happens to be at the end of that line or walk into that puke, it will also catch on fire, and that is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Also, all your abilities have two attacks and unlimited ammo. Basically, you can't run out of attacks with any weapon, but you there is a bar that gradually goes down every time you use it, and this just refills when you're not using that weapon. So, you know, you can switch to another weapon and let it recharge. And, you know, the more advanced the ability, the quicker it'll be used up and such. But there's no, you know, there's no conserving your ammo or anything. You can't run out. And the two attacks, the you know, there's a regular attack, just holding down the attack button, and then there is one that you charge up. And this is a good strategic thing because they're different. And the charging up takes time, so you'll be at the enemy's mercy with that particular Geno Hunter until you're done charging up. And the charging up of the puke unleashes, unleashes a massive amount of it. And you can hit several enemies, and you can light them all on fire. And it's just... delightful. It's Christmas. Another ability is... And this is going to sound ridiculous, and that's because it is. You can shoot cannonballs from your right arm. And the charged up version is a much more explosive cannonball. The abilities basically do have two things to them. Well, not, I'm not sure all of them do, but maybe most of them. Basically, you can use them you know, to fight enemies, and, you know, it's just a weapon, and it has its strengths and weaknesses, and that goes for basically all of them, except for maybe the two or three that are useless. And then you can use them to get past certain points. Invisibility is necessary to get past spikes that can see you somehow. And if you're invisible, they won't see you, and you can sneak past them. You know, that's really all that's for. And this goes for most of the abilities. You know, flame can burn down this plant life. You're really not leaving these areas very fertile at all. I think it all takes place on the one planet that's been hit by the parasite. And yes, if you do make it to the very end, you will indeed see the huge round original parasite that you see in the opening movie. When I say make it through, it's not that the game is necessarily all that hard, but it's really repetitive. It really just does not 
keep you all that entertained. It's basically just the one thing over and over. You just, you know, find your way, which is annoyingly difficult sometimes because of this compass system. There's no map. There's just a compass system. And yes, it'll point you in the direction of your next objective and north, in case you need that. And the other three Geno Hunters, which is quite nice. But it won't necessarily point you in the direction that you're supposed to go to get there. About the other Geno Hunters, it is kind of nice that you have a nice and simple system to give them orders. You can give orders to any of the three that you aren't currently you know, playing as. And you can switch back and forth between them just by pressing, you know, F1 through F4. Any time you can switch to that one. And the others do have AI. It's not like they're just going to be standing and getting themselves slaughtered in a fight. They don't always make good decisions, but they will fight. The AI is pretty simplistic. But you can give any of them orders. You can group them so they'll follow you. You can ungroup them if you want to, you know, explore an area by yourself, or if it's, like, a dangerous area, though I will say they usually do not get themselves killed. If they have to make a tough jump, they do. Or they tell you, I can't make that jump, and they stay put, you know. They'll go to the edge and say, nope, not gonna happen, sorry. Not in English because they don't speak it, but you get the gist of it. The areas are I mean, there's an okay amount of color, and you do feel like some of this might be organic, but the level design itself is just really, you know, big blocks and not very compelling. You know, you're not going to remember an area from this game and think like, Wow, that was really pretty, you know. And it's not the the fact that the graphics are of course outdated because the game is over ten years old by now. Back then, I mean I got it when it was relatively new, and even back then it was just not that good. The graphics were fine for the time, you know. The nice shiny surfaces of the Geno Hunters, I was actually quite positively surprised because they looked a lot better than it did in the demo. Which, by the way, if you're planning to play this, the demo is also worth a download, because it's not the same. It's an area that is similar appears in the game itself, but the level that you play in the demo is not in the overall game. I love it when they do that. Anyway, there's just really not anything else. It's, it's too monotonous, and... You know, there's no connecting to... You know, there are no characters. The four Geno Hunters just have an... They have different builds, and you can customize their color. And their color will change as you mutate them. And you can choose what abilities they have. It's also smart to be a bit selective about who gets what genetic material. You know, if you want to favorize anyone. But do remember, you might have to be using the one you did not favorize at some point, so be smart about it. And some levels start out with them separated from one another, and they have to, you know, discover, they have to get to each other. That's where the one adventure element of this actually comes in. There are... Excuse me. I guess I'll just come out and say it. Explosives. And it's binary, so you have to pick up two different parts. And since you only have four, you can only carry one part. No, you can only carry four parts. They can only carry a part each. So if you want to make two explosions, you know, you have to bring two to one place where the one part of the binary is, and the other two to the other place. So if one of them can't jump or run worth anything, that guy will have trouble when it comes to that. The game isn't long as such, but it really feels it because 
it really just does not. I mean, the first level and the last level. The only difference is the guns you have, you know, the, the weapons you have. You know, the puzzles are sort of okay. And some of the effects aren't bad. It is also kind of nice how they actually did manage to give you what you pretty much expect from a typical shooter game, in spite of it all being biological. You have a sort of SMG weapon. You know, I already told you about the cannon, that's like a rocket launcher. There's a flamethrower, basically. There's an electricity weapon. You know, it... Yeah, they pretty much have all the different ones. This game was made by the same people who went on to do The Thing, and you may have already seen Spoonie's review of that. One thing I did want to point out is that you can t tell, I think Computer Artworks is the name, you can tell it was the ones, you know, the same ones, because some of the Thing creatures in the Thing game which does suck, Spoonie's right, are pretty much like some of the ones in this game. And the puke thing, you know, you can't do it in the thing game. Your allies will all the time, but, you know, some of the enemies will sort of attack with the puke ability, so they basically just reuse that stuff. And... You know, it works a lot better here. Overall, I can't claim to recommend this game, because it's not a good game. But if you like the premise, you might enjoy some of it. And by now, you can probably get it pretty cheap. And, you know, if you still have a computer that can run this thing. Let's see if it says... it. Oh, it is from 99-2000, so... But yeah, that is my spoiler-free review of Evolva, so no sex jokes. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.